Yeah. 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 Groundwater, you know, again, we someone talked about this at the end of class yesterday, where we think about water, and it's probably one of the best solvents on Earth. You talk about water all class, and you want to get angry. Yep, is that fun? And so we think about water, we think about dissolving, and as the groundwater seeps, or the water seeps through the ground, it actually starts to dissolve a lot of the minerals and the metals that are in the soil. And that's why I remember yesterday we were talking about hard water. The farther down you have to drill to get to the water table, the more hard or the more mineral packed the water is going to be. So when we think about groundwater, one of the common features that we often get with groundwater is caves. And caves are formed by dissolution. And all that really means is that basically the cave material, the rock material, is dissolved away. Now, this Although it says usually, it is almost always limestone. So let's stop and think for a minute. Do you guys remember back early on in the semester what limestone is? Calcium, calcium carbonate, well done. CaCO3, calcium carbonate. And so what happens is our groundwater tends to get a bit acidic, and then it goes into the calcium carbonate and it dissolves away, and we're left with, we're left with this calcium oxide, which is basically calcite, plus H, oh, I'm gonna screw this up, but HCO3, which is basically carbonic acid. Now carbonic acid sounds really bad, but it's the same acid that's in soda. So you get this calcium oxide, which is basically the calcite, and then you get carbonic acid, and that dissolves away the limestone. And then with that, we basically get these two systems. We get this whole thing we call karst topography, and that's more of a general term. And then we have caves. And this is what a lot of you guys missed out on when we went on that field trip. So there's a lot of cave systems. Now, we think about caves, what are they? What is a cave? Underground water supply. Kind of. Standard. They're like a mass. Just like empty spaces in the ground that are all physical water. Perfect. It's just basically, by definition, it's an opening underground. It's a naturally existing opening. So, you know, what's the difference between a mine and a cave? Well, a cave is natural. Okay, that gap. And then rock is natural. And with that, as Sanders said, this typically happens through dissolution, where the groundwater goes in and dissolves away the limestone. <coughs> By the way, this will be a test question on Thursday. How are caves formed? So let's say, look at that. Yes, water, but it, there's a lot more that's involved. So let's say, look at this image right here. We'll go back. So we look here, what, okay, this is all limestone. What are these? Water. Okay, how does water get in there? Where are those? The cracks. So the water starts to fill the cracks, right? Now, the longer that water sits there, what's it going to do with the rock that it's in contact with? It fills all the way. So over time, when it fills cracks, we get bigger. Now, notice. Okay. Notice where the water table is. Yep. Notice that this pop of the zone of saturation yep. lines up with the height of the water. <laughs> so over time, those cracks get bigger and bigger, and eventually, yeah. what starts to happen now? Yeah. Yeah, the water table is starting to drop, and what are we left with? Caves. Open caves. That's the process I want you guys to discuss. Okay, the water gets into the cracks of the limestone, dissolves away at the limestone, and as it's doing that, those spaces get larger and larger and larger, and then the water table eventually drops well below those, leaving those places with open air. 
And so now this is where we're at today. And then you can see these little images in here. What are those? Oh, those are Okay, stalactites and stalagmites. Okay. What happens when a stalagmite comes in contact with a stalactite? Oh, it creates a column. It creates a column, right? That's this little piece right here. Remember these? Did you guys see when? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, any questions on how caves are formed? Now, another kicker. Okay, let's Can I go back? Can I go back? So, we think about caves. Caves are just one piece of this whole concept of karst topography. All right, and we think about places where we have karst topography. There's places like Kentucky, Florida, southern Indiana. These are places that have large amounts of limestone that gets eroded away, gets dissolved away. Now, in karst topography, we have a lot of different features that are common with that. The main one that most people think about are sinkholes. Talk to me about a sinkhole. What do you think that, what happens with a sinkhole? The open area underneath gets a push the ground and just collapses. That basically, yeah. okay, that cave is basically hollowed out so much. All right, if we go back to that previous slide, so let's go back a little bit here. We go down here and we look at this formation. If we look at this top one right here, if that had been eroded to where it came very close to the surface and people start building their homes, putting a lot of businesses or construction here on top of that, that actually would create more weight than what that rock structure could support. And eventually over time, it would then collapse. And that's basically what we call a sinkhole. So all a sinkhole really is is just basically when a cave collapses inward and then you have sinkholes. And these aren't always small. If you look at this one here, to put it into scale, this right here is actually a street, probably a, close to a five lane street. So that gives you an idea of how big sinkholes can really be. Right, so that's a pretty big sinkhole. Over here is a map, and this is an entire region with all these tiny sinkholes eventually fill up with water. So a lot of times in Florida you see these. And what's really neat um, is each one of these is linked to another. This is a whole underground cave network. And so if you put pollution here in one of these sinkholes, that same pollution is going to show up in all of these, given enough time. So that's kind of an important thing to remember. So that's sinkholes. Another one we talk about are sinking streams. These are interesting to say the least. Take a look at the picture there on the left. You can see the stream channel here and that runoff is running down here and disappearing into the mountainside. And that's because there's a large enough crack right here and that water is simply draining down into the cave system. Those are called sinking streams. What's going on over here on the right? Water. What are they doing with that water? What does it look like? Does water naturally turn that color? So what are they doing? No. They're testing it. How are they testing it? Well, what that is, is the naturally safe biodegradable dock. Oh, they're going to see where it leads to. That's what they did in that area. Yeah, so they're going to put some dye in the river, and that dye then goes throughout the whole system, and they're able to actually see where all this water is going and what's connected. Yeah. And so a lot of times they can do that here in these, where it actually <laughs> will sink down and travel through this network. We start getting the dye popping up in all these little ponds. You know, obviously those are connected somehow. Okay, so that's kind of cool. All right, so that's caves and sinking streams and karst topography. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about 
and some more with the. Okay. So again, this is what's happening here. Hey, uh, you guys remember what to call these right here? Exactly. Wait, what? Almost looks like a bad ear. Yeah. Oh, you guys yeah, remember those? Are the curtains? Oh. Yeah, the calcite curtains. Yeah. All right. Bacon. Yep. <laughs> so, what's really happening with these? Well, I mean. Yeah, it's dripping down, right? So water's coming out of the ceiling and droplet by droplet as it falls, what does it leave behind? The mineral It leaves the calcite behind. <clears throat> and so these are literally growing so drop by drop of water. And then when you think about places like this and here, you know, it takes a long time for those to regrow. So that's just something to remember with that. So again, these are mostly hard water deposits. One of the coolest places to go, if you don't want to go see a cave, where most people are like, eh, caves are kind of boring. You can still see this happening on our roads. You go to any place where there's an overpass, like the overpass here in town. If you go underneath that, just look closely. The water that's coming off the tracks above it or off the road are doing the same thing underneath that surface. So if you actually go underneath the bridge, you will see these tiny little straws hanging down from the overpass. And it's the same concept in play. You have minerals held in the water as the water drops off, those minerals are left behind to solidify. Right. So that's caves in general. Do we have any questions before we move forward? Harry, what do you think?